On today's video, we have some news regarding the PlayStation 5 and how it's going to handle backwards compatibility and crossplay in comparison to the next Xbox console. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe for all the latest gaming news. Let's get into it. Here we go, back at it yet again with another video. Good day, guys. I'm Chap Chong, and if you end up enjoying today's video and you had a great weekend playing video games, make sure you smack that like button real good. But anyway, we have a bunch of gaming news to get to in today's video. As I did state at the very beginning of the video, we are talking about the PlayStation 5 and its cross-gen right now, but later on in the video, make sure you stay tuned because there's a bunch of other stuff that we are talking about. But the first thing is the PlayStation 5, its cross-play and its backwards compatibility and all that, how it's going to work in comparison to the next Xbox console, the Project Scarlet, because, well, it's actually some sort of sad news because it isn't the best stuff out there from what we are hearing through these rumors. So the main topic at hand is that the PlayStation 5 looks like it will not allow exclusives to be able to be played from a PlayStation 5 to a PlayStation 4. What that means is if let's say there was a Last of Us Part 3 and it was released on the PlayStation 5 as a main PlayStation 5 exclusive title, you won't be able to actually go back on the PlayStation 4 and have it as a game on there. The reason this is actually kind of a big deal is that if you take the Xbox brand on hand, with the Microsoft exclusives, what they will allow you to do with Halo Infinite, which is a launch title on the next Xbox, for example, is that it'll be able to be played on pretty much every Microsoft system. So it'll let you play it on the next gen Xbox, which will be the Project Scarlet at the like point in time, that's what we are calling it. And then you've got the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X, and just the Xbox One family in general. And also the PC side of things will allow you to play it on there too. So Xbox and Microsoft will allow you to play all your Xbox games on no matter what system if you're just in that Microsoft family and that's really really amazing news we've, we've kind of already known that but the sad news comes on the PlayStation side of things and this is where it really really sucks because well if you buy a game that's just launched on the PlayStation 5 it's only going to be on the PlayStation 5 it won't be able to be cross-played or cross-gen played in any sort of way and that really sucks the only potential we do have right now is that if a game does originally come out on a PS4, it will be allowed to be able to play on a PlayStation 5 eventually. Also, just a side note, and just to clarify everything for you guys, this is for exclusive games. Now, for multi-platform games that are third-party created, for example, anything from like EA or Ubisoft, that isn't just on PlayStation, that's on everything on Xbox, Nintendo, and PlayStation, and PC and whatnot, well, those games, they're going to be able to go through cross-gen play and everything like that. But if it's a game that's coming from like Santa Monica Studios or any of the other studios that PlayStation do have as first-party studios like God of War or Uncharted or anything along those lines, those games, if they come out on PlayStation 5 first, that's it for them. They're on PlayStation 5 and that's what you've got to deal with. You can't go back and have that game on a PS4 in any way. But as I said with Microsoft, the coolest thing about that is that on an Xbox, you'll be able to play it on an Xbox Scarlet, or you'll be able to play it over on the Xbox One that you already have, so you won't have to upgrade right away. So if a game that you're looking forward to is coming out on the PlayStation 5, you've got to upgrade to a PlayStation 5. You can't play it on a PS4. There's no cross-gen compatibility there. It's just what you got is what you got, and it kind of sucks, as I said. The most annoying part about this is that if that game is in your library, that's it. Like, if you've downloaded it digitally, you've got to deal with it now. But if you look at the Xbox side of things, as I did mention, their, their platform is built beautifully. Honestly, I think that's one of the most important features that I've seen on Xbox. One of the key features that has brought in a lot of new gamers to Microsoft's side. And compared to what they were or how they operated, let's say, seven years ago, it's definitely a complete 180 on Microsoft's part with the Xbox brand. But PlayStation, for a company that's for the players or for the gamers, whatever their tagline is, I think this is very disappointing. I'm hoping that this doesn't become the truth, that this isn't official and this isn't final. But according to the infrastructure, just the way the software is implemented on PlayStation side of things, 
it's most likely going to be this way. And let me know if this is going to be a really big disappointment to you guys in the comments down below, because for me, it is. Like, I know a lot of people out there, they can't upgrade right away, because, well, it's a lot of money to upgrade to a brand new generational console, and not everyone out there can do that. Luckily, they do come around around, like, Christmas time, holiday season, which is good. It allows people to buy it, because they are in that holiday spending spirit, but... <sighs> At the same time, not everyone's going to get that new console right away, but they may want to have that new game. But on the Xbox side of things, as I said, with Halo Infinite, you won't have to upgrade to the next gen Xbox, the Xbox Scarlet. You'll be able to play it on an Xbox One or your PC. So that's a really, really big step on, oh, I guess, big check mark on Xbox side of things compared to PlayStation. Let me know what you guys think regarding this. This is actually some pretty big news right here. It's sad news. But yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what Sony does with this. But according to the software and hardware, how it's all actually working, we may not actually see that. And with so many people playing digitally, it shouldn't really matter these days. But for some reason, it does. I guess Sony just, I don't know. They're just the, the way that they practice things isn't the best. Um, I, I'm really hoping this doesn't come to 100% truth and they do figure out different ways to do this. But we'll have to wait and see. And I'll definitely keep you guys updated on that. But in the meantime, that's it for that piece of news. Now we are moving on to the next news on today's video. And I guess this is also some sad news, but not really. It's actually really awesome. So as you guys know, I'm a massive Star Wars fan. Heck, I'm wearing a Star Wars t-shirt in this video. Just coincidentally, I totally forgot I was even going to report on this in today's video. But a new scene from the new Star Wars movie will be premiering in Fortnite. And the reason I said this is sad news is because, well... Um, it's in Fortnite. Who, like, who wants to load up Fortnite to see Star Wars? Well, not me, because I'm not playing that game, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys don't play it anymore either, but I guess this is some sort of desperation attempt by Epic Games and Disney combining yet again, and well, yeah, we're getting a new scene from the next film, which is Rise of the Star uh, Skywalker. Whoops, I messed up my words there, but like, I don't know why they're doing this, because at the end of the day, I know most of us will not care. Instead, we're not going to load up Fortnite and see the new scene from Star Wars Last Jedi. What we're going to do is actually be quite smart and wait a couple of minutes, because then it's just going to be on Twitter and on Reddit and all the websites out there, all over social media, and we won't have to load up Fortnite again. I think this is kind of a way to try for, like, Epic Games to get a lot of gamers back in, a lot of Star Wars fans. Hey, I got Yoda over there, I got Darth Vader, I got the shirt on. Just happens. So, I'm a massive Star Wars fan, but I'm not going to load up Fortnite. That's just me. I know some of you guys might still play this game. It is a decent game, but... Uh, once they just got crazy with the crazy building, I just gave up on that game and I just can't go back to it. My shooting is still accurate as hell, but I ain't getting on that game. It's just not going to happen. Sorry, Disney. Sorry, Epic Games. I'm not falling for your trap. It's a trap. That's, that's it. It's a trap. So I'm not going to get into it. Um, but yeah, may the floss be with you. That's terrible. That's a Fortnite slash Star Wars mix up, mash up, whatever you want to call it. But I ain't getting into it. I'm not falling for it, and uh, I know most of you guys won't either. As I said, it's going to happen, but I, I, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to wait till it's all over social media to see this new scene. Then again, the movie is just a couple of weeks away, and I, I'm really excited for it. But anyway, I'm not going to go on and on about Star Wars. Instead, we are moving on to our final news report on today's show, and it's some sort of YouTube, Twitch, like, gaming creator related news it's that twitch's dr disrespect is developing a tv series based on his streaming persona now this is the first kind of big time deal that we have seen if you don't know guy beam plays dr disrespect he actually used to be a developer for some of the call of duty games out there and well dr disrespect managed to get himself a big scripted television narrative series which is awesome for him congratulations but I really don't know where this is going to go. Because right now, at this point in time, there aren't any solid details about the show in any way. But what Dr. Disrespect did tell The Hollywood Reporter is that some early discussions around animation. So maybe it's a fully animated series or some sort of live show, live action show with animations at certain scenes because maybe it will come down to production costs and whatnot and they switch to animation, which could be a really, really fun series to see Dr. Disrespect on television. I'm sure 
he's probably getting paid millions upon millions of dollars. And congratulations, I love it. I love when I see content creators get paid big time by the mainstream media and that classic television and all that. But uh, man, I don't know. I'd rather see Doc just do his Twitch thing. And I'm surprised he actually took that Twitch deal and didn't go to Mix or anything like that. He's stuck on Twitch, even though I'm sure he's not a fan of Twitch. And a lot of people aren't either because of the way that they practice things and their TOS and all that. But yeah, uh, congratulations, Dr. Disrespect. But what I will say at the same time is that if this television series is based on him in any sort of way and not just Dr. Disrespect, and I'm talking about Guy Beam, man, that two-time champion back-to-back, you don't want to see his uh, two timing on the show either. Oh man, I probably shouldn't have gone there, but I just went there and that's it. That's it for the gaming news. I'm going to end it right there before it gets even worse. So hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. Please smack the like button if you did. And also subscribe with the notification bell on if you are a brand new viewer. And if you're already a subscriber, make sure that notification bell is on so you know when I do upload videos. But until then, I'm going to go and enjoy a meal. See you later.